be a warm day. Definitely need a better way to hold this together. Oh, hey, baby Frogger, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by all the same. Uh, 
I'm getting a late start anyway. Long mowing took a bit more time than I was expecting, so I'm kind of setting up here last minute. And you might have to excuse all the noise that's coming in the background, but it is way too hot not to have the garage door open. Get some better lighting in here. And I probably won't plug this in, so I don't uh, have my tablet batteries die in the middle of the screen. And for some reason, viewer count is not showing up. Streamlabs app is a little bit buggy still. Let's see if I can uh, correct this. This usually works. Anybody? Come on now. Come on. There we go. I've uh, had my workshop in a bit of a disarray. I've got other projects up and around the house, so I had to replace a toilet seat. So I was digging through my. Uh, pliers there because I couldn't actually get the um, proper uh, wrench for it. Okay. Don't need that. Screwdriver I don't need. Bevel gauge I don't need at the minute. I don't know why exactly that's out. Alright, can you hear me okay over the uh, one more, I hope. I definitely don't need a chalk line. I don't know why I had that out in the first place. Okay. Let's figure out what we're doing. And for those of you just joining us, I am Daddy War Crimes woodworking cartoon villain extraordinaire in the middle of a spice rack because when you're not in the middle of doing your evil dastardly deeds you might want to have a cake and in order to have a cake you need to be able to bake a cake in order to bake a cake you need to have spices in order to have spices you need to have a place to store them and because your wife is very demanding and has a billion spices and she wants you to build a spice rack all right so I've got, uh, let's see, my last left off, dropping everything on the floor, as we do. But uh, doing a dovetail on one of the sides, and this is going to be the bottom. And I'm going to need to make that into this, so I'm going to need to cut some uh, pins on here. Which is doable. But first, I do want to, so I've turned up this side. And what I ought to do is figure out a final length of these, a final width of the, of the entire piece. And I do have all of the shells cut to uh, approximately the same length. Am I checking here? Oh, you know what? That's uh, that's, just, that's a bad mark. Okay. Um, shooting board. Okay, so we would probably want to go about three eighths of an inch, I would say. Um, that would be. So we're doing three-quarter material, so about halfway through that would be three-eighths. Is that, uh, I don't know if that's actually a good, good structurally. You only have that to, to, be, to be halfway through the board as a dado. Seems like it might work, though. So, um, 
I'm going to want to have the top and bottom uh, a bit wider than the shelves. And also, I, I'm going to need it to um, have sufficient length to dovetail into it. So, three quarter plus three quarter, that's going to be an inch and a half plus another three quarter, which is going to be nine quarters total. Wait, no, that's not right. Yeah, so two and a quarter inches, wow. So I think um, what I'm gonna have to do is just go ahead and cut the tails or cut the pins on this and assemble a carcass Then come in and do the shelves later. So um, I suppose the first thing to do is take our top and bottom carcass piece and true up one end of it, which I've already done on the first one, and then uh, just make them exactly even. All right, so. I can go there, I can go there. Ooh. That's not good. I'm getting some checking on here. So, I don't know why this is, uh, this is happening. This wood was supposed to be kiln dried, so there really shouldn't be any moisture in there. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting some cracks on the end grain there which really is going to screw with my plans. Um, so, unfortunately, it looks like I'm gonna have to take a couple inches off these, which will make my spice rack a little bit uh, narrower. Damn. Yeah, um, it's most definitely not an ideal circumstance, but uh, I really don't think I have much of a choice anymore. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's do this first. We'll uh, true up this side right here. Make sure it's all nice and square, and then we'll get to uh, getting rid of that checking. And hopefully that doesn't uh, present itself in any of the other pieces I've done already. Should have done this first. There is nothing more satisfying than end grain shavings. Well, it's not exactly square now, is it? to someday invest in a little brass hammer to make those adjustments. This is the only plane where I really need to do it. Just to 
62 doesn't have a lateral adjustment for the plane blade. That's why I can't uh, understand everybody's fascination with the low angles. I mean, they, they, they do a job. But, uh, kind of a pain in the ass to use. You know, what, what? That's not what I need. Maybe like that. Maybe that'll do her. Once you get your shooting plane set up, you don't change it if you can avoid it. That's closer. Still not where I need to be. I need some kind of. I can use this. Take off that corner again. I'm removing more material than I really want to. plans are not fixed, so we can adjust as we need to. That's, that's a beautiful part of woodworking. You, you start getting skills to, to make, make things just work. You don't really need a detailed set of instructions. And uh, once you start getting the skills, you can make adjustments on the fly if need be. Because nothing ever works perfectly. Still not, not quite there. And, and once I get this set, it, it should be good for the rest of the day. Something jiggling back there. Must be my screwdrivers. Getting close. Getting awful close, unfortunately. just a little bit. Probably make more sense to say, okay, uh, there we go. That'll work just fine. And, yeah, I need to cut off right about, is that my true face? Yes, it is. My neighbor mowing his lawn. I'm not sure if I was an inspiration for that or, or not, but Tuesday mornings are a good time to mow your lawn. And let's go ahead and do a night call all around, score all around to prevent tear out. Okay, and let's go ahead and get my uh, big chisel out. Hmm. 
we're getting a little warm already. Little dog there. So I have something to push against. here and that way we keep everything as square as possible. We do the final screwing with the plane. Make sure we're still square, should be. Good to go. Alright. Now I need to make this one the same. So I'm going to start with this face because I uh, made a mistake with the marking gauge over here so cut off as much of that as possible. So true edge up against the fence. should to prevent tear out. Good to go there. And on this one I shall endeavor to stay a bit further away from the line. sharpen this thing already. That could explain a lot. I'm using my dovetail saw, not the crosscut saw. I 
rack over here. On the left side is a temporary storage rack for my uh, work in progress pieces. Not, not like a, a proper lumber rack, just a, a, a work piece rack. And this is the one I just cut right. go too far on this. Still want to keep these uh, equal length and I haven't. But that's okay. Let's take a couple shavings off this piece. Now you can't do this on a uh, compound miter saw, you just don't have that, uh, that ability to take off, you know, a couple thousands of an inch and, you know, finesse your way to, to pr proper length. So you're stuck with maybe a, a sander and even with a power sander, that's That's really iffy. You can you can uh, go overboard on a power sander real quick, but a shooting board, just really really fine, fine cuts, and uh, don't get overly ambitious. So you 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 you, you have a lot more room to work. All right. So let's see if we can get our tails in. So I won't. I think the face to be out, and that's out, so trick here is going to be trying to get these uh, into a position where I can actually mark it, because this thing uh, is a lot longer than I'm accustomed to working with. Um, oh shoot. How about this? How about, uh, I put this in the vise. Put the tails over the top, huh? And again, my saws are in the way. Everything's in the way. That can go over there. And we can get this guy. And where do I want this? I want the face being out, and that face is out, and that's the face. So, yeah, I still got a little bit of checking there. I didn't quite get it all off, I don't think. That is really unfortunate. So, I'll have this protrude. Uh, you know what, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's go ahead and make it three quarter. And then I can take this guy, lay that underneath. Oh, not quite. A little, a little higher. That's pretty close. Go ahead and get uh, right up on the edge there. And can I get a hold fast on that? I really need to redo the leather on these. I'm not sure if it was um, what kind of glue I used. I think I used contact cement for it. 
That was a mistake. Maybe uh, epoxy it in next time. But just have some permanent leather uh, strap to that, uh, that iron surface so it doesn't mar the wood as much. Or at all, hopefully. Yep, this is going to be real tricky. I'm sure there's a proper way of doing this. I just don't know what it is. Nice, uh, nice score on the end grain here. Get a mark for my saw. And I do, uh, I do tails first. I think that was based on uh, Rob Cosman's advice. But uh, Paul Sellers also does tails first, so he's, he's my primary source of learning. screw block in the way. Alright, so I've got what where's my uh is this a three quarter mark? I believe it is. Yeah, that sounds right. Mix some square lines. But yeah, you know, first let's mark the corners. Because the corners are coming. Wait, are the corners coming off? Now the corners, the ends are staying. Okay. So let's mark there. There. These are the pieces that are coming out. There. And there. Just a rough guide as to how far I want to mark down. And then I can do a full mark across the waist later on. Got like that. Uh, I think I'm just going to go back and forth and back and forth. Between the vertical and the so between the square and the marking gauge before I finally figure out what I'm doing. using the inside of the square like this but uh, when you're dealing with, with smaller work pieces you can't really have a good reference for the for the fence of it so that gives me a, a bit more surface area to look at this side I can flip it over because I got more surface area All right, that's looking pretty good. And 
now we can mark across the marking gauge so we can get a final place to stop. I do like this one, it's one of the newer ones, um, or it's a new production. You can get them at, uh, or at least I got this one at, at Woodcraft. But yeah, it leaves a really nice mark and uh, works pretty dang good. Now, wait a minute. Probably should, it should have been marking those. I'm just going to go ahead and when you're doing a western style back saw, you always want to be pushing away from the face that's going to show. In that case, or in this instance, the, my face, um, my true face is going to be the one that's uh, showing, so I want to go away from that. Stay on the inside of my lines here. Just stay completely square using the mirror trick here. Fine convention just because this is where my marks are and I trust these marks. And I don't think we can get good marks on the other side because of the inside of the tail. side or that end and end of this one. Get her say on the waist side of the line. It's vibrating quite a bit. It's not necessarily bad for the joinery, but it makes an awful racket. smaller than 3 eighths, interestingly enough. Maybe a quarter inch. Let's go ahead and bring out all the chisels. Why not? Chisel, how sharp are you today? You know what? 
just just for the sake of not having to redouble efforts, go ahead and put it on the fine stone. I'm not going to put it on the coarse stone, it looks pretty good. this a little bit. So I'm going to need to keep these guys really sharp. Nice little burr. Alright, that should do this for a little bit. On to chopping. And you know what? Where do I look on the other side? Yeah, the 3 eighths I'm still going to need, so polish the edge on this as well. actually have room to work here. I'm not going to on top of ourselves. I can put this in here. Saw, you can go there. Don't need this at the moment. Don't need the crosscut saw at the moment. That goes there. That goes there. This goes there. That works. This goes back in my pocket before I stab myself. I'm pretty sure bleeding on live streams is frowned upon. And that can go there. supposed to have something underneath the workpiece, but that makes it a bit difficult to grip, so we will forego that. Okay, so I'm going to make my uh, gauge lines a bit clearer. just a little bit and do it in the first shot. And I'm just cutting a little wedge out of here. There we go. The 
Same on the second pin, on the second waist between pins, I guess. Go. And now we can get a bit more aggressive now that we've got that chopped out. Now obviously you don't want to go too far because this chisel is actually too wide to go all the way through. Try and somewhat follow the angle of the pins which can be a bit tricky. Now, oddly enough, the first time I tried this, uh, tried dovetails, I used the coping saw to clear out the pins and the, and the tails. And more and more I saw people just using chisels to chop it out. Never figure out why. It's like a coping saw is much, much faster than you don't have to use as much chisel work. Except, at the end of the day, you actually need to use your chisel more if you're using a coping saw because it leaves so much waste left over. At the end of the day, it just makes more sense to, to only use your chisels when you're chopping them out. I'm not too terribly concerned if I accidentally nick the inside surface. So that's not going to be seen once the joint is closed. I am getting a little bit concerned about how much I'm sweating. It's a, it's a pretty warm day already. these days when I come into some money I'm going to need to build a proper shop with air conditioning. I think that is definitely going to be necessary around here. Alright, let's move on to this side and we're going to need the quarter inch now. Didn't go all the way down to the line, all of it, so. I need to extend my saw curves. And also better define the gauge lines. So they're a little bit rough and uh, chisel makes it a lot nicer. Okay, now we can come away just a little bit. Unfortunately, on this side, I don't really have to worry about following the angles as much. I guess it wouldn't hurt.
such uh, cramped quarters, it's, it's kind of hard to get the waste out. But we're getting there. Someday I'm actually going to become proficient at dovetails if I do them enough. I'm not there yet, by any means. Stay on this one for now. There we go, that seems to be moving quite a bit. I think once we uh we're going to be able to get that out now. But right now the bench is in the way. And physics is in the way the other direction. It's taking little itty bitty wedges out. Stay away from your gauge line for now. So you can end up crushing the fibers and making that hole deeper than you really wanted it. The, uh, the most important things um, I've done recently is I finally got the, uh, the PlayStation out, which uh, that's that's one of my primary methods of guitar practice. I, I use the game Rocksmith. And believe it or not, I'm actually a better woodworker than I am a guitar player. So, uh, all the practice I can get with guitar is going to be, you know, worthwhile. I have been doing open mic night, which gives me an excuse to play. It gives me an excuse to practice. If you're not, uh, if you're not performing, no reason to practice, right? I can see that we're coming. Oh, no, we just got a chunk coming up there. That's, uh, that's actually quite regrettable because now I don't have. So it, uh, it's split down the middle, so now I don't have that uh, chunk of wood to support it if I go to chop from the other side. So that means I'm not chopping from the other side anymore. That's okay. That just popped right out. No trouble at all. And there's that one. All 
right, we've got quite a bit still to clean up. Always want to go from the outside and never go across the other side. So you would just pulling things out. got a leaf floor going on out there. I really hope that's not uh, interfering too much with the with sound quality, but no one can tell me otherwise because I'm here all by myself. Ago, I actually uh, broke down and, and started seeing a guitar teacher, which was an extremely good investment. I think I gained a lot from it, but uh, about uh, a month or so after I started that, I got news that I was going to PCS. So that kind of put a stop to that, and the new position was a bit more hectic and uh, also I was quite far away from everything it's about a 30 minute drive from the house to anywhere about an hour drive from work to the house so most of my time was spent driving at least my free time was spent driving Now, of course, with retirement, the money's just a bit tighter, so. You know what, I'll, I'll stick with, uh, with the Rocksmith game and see what I can find on the internet for free. It's worked, so, it's worked pretty well for woodworking, anyway. been downsizing my uh, my musical equipment quite a bit sold a number of my guitars amplifiers and it's just uh, you, you start out you, you get so fascinated by the equipment you just want to acquire more and more of it you I still do obviously I mean it's it's fun equipment but yeah, you get to a point, it's like, you know, do you actually use this stuff? And the answer was no. No, I don't actually use my 12-string. And I also didn't use the Blue Voodoo, the 50-watt 412 Blue Voodoo. Why? Because I have neighbors. You know, maybe if I was in a soundproof bunker or something like that, yeah, maybe I might like a 12, uh, 412 50 watt head. The thing did sound amazing. When I, when I finally got rid of it, I was living in a 900 square foot apartment. Couldn't use the damn thing at all. All I was doing was taking up real estate that I didn't have.
it's okay to have a little bit of a divot in the middle of your of your pins so long as the faces uh, so long as you don't go below, below the lines on the faces but if you go below the lines say in the middle here that's not really a problem because this is end grain and the end grain's not actually holding anything And uh, no one will see it because it's going to be hidden by everything else, by the, by the rest of the joint. You know, try to make it flat if you can, but if you, if you need to dip down in the middle, that's fine too. At least that's what I'm telling myself right now. Recently, uh, well, actually, yesterday, took in my old guitar effects processor and digital reverb and a rack mount tuner. All, all so three rack mount pieces that I had left. I used to have a rack mount mixer and a compressor. Got rid of those. Oh. say about eight years ago, traded it for a uh, the Line 6 pod. Which honestly hasn't been much more useful, but it does make nice sounds. And it, uh, it doesn't bother my neighbors. see how this works um, with the tails and we're doing face out I think yep, we, we are definitely not yet fitting Okay, so I think the first thing I want to do is these uh, these are not square. So I think I want to try and get these a little bit closer to square. And then maybe put a chamfer on the inside. Like 
that. And this one too. I know the proper thing to do is, is to work the, uh, is to fit the pins to the tails. But these tails are quite out of wax, so they need to be, they need to be trimmed so. See how that's looking so far. Better. Much better. That's uh, so this is still that one's the face, that's the face, okay. So yeah, that is the direction they're going. Ooh. That's pretty dang close, I should say. Of these pens, or the inside of these tails, I think we might be in business. So round that over just a little bit. And this one. Nothing too dramatic. Keep everything from breaking off. And yeah, I didn't. Looks like I didn't get quite close enough to my uh, line there, did I? I don't think I even chiseled those out. Or even flattened that out. Okay to hollow out the inside, I think. After looking, I like it. I think that would have been a good way to cut my finger off. Let's check that out. Maybe let's try this. Put this in the glass.
and that appears to be a dovetail. Not bad, I'd say. Not bad at all. So let's um, get some pencil marks on here. And you know what? I wish I had a different pencil. So it's A and A. But now we are actually starting to see this take shape. All right. Get this one off. Set this aside for now. And now we need to cut tails on this guy. So there's my face, there's my edge. And we're doing face and edge, I think, on the outside, right? Yep. So this face and this edge are also going to be on the outside. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark this as B already, so I know where I'm going with that. And since I've already got a quasi-template here, let's just go ahead and use this. I'm wondering, did I move my dividers? Well, this it does still seem to be about right. So I can use my dividers on this. Nice marks for my pins. Right, that's my that's my true face, so we'll go off that. These don't need to perfectly matching. They just need to be look good enough from where they're standing. So the only really important thing about the dovetail joint, well I guess there are many important things, but as far as, as matching, is one, that it looks somewhat uh, aesthetically pleasing. And two, that the pins match the tails. I really hate using the inside of the square. So that's what you gotta do. So Let's go ahead and flip this around. So the outside matters more than the inside. Um, yeah, I'm gonna make need to make a gauge line here. 
I'm okay on the edges because those are those are getting removed. Mr. Bevel Gauge. Yeah, I really, really need to make a proper dovetail marker. This just is not cutting it anymore. Or suppose I could buy one. I don't think that would be quite as fun. Just trying to arrange things and hold things so that I'm not cutting towards my own fingers. Side ones. Nope, that's not what I want to do. There we go. here between these last two lines. And that's the inside. Score all the way across it. I'm just pleased by how that's kind of tearing out on the, on the outside or on the edges. At this point, what can I do? Cups are already made. Dovetail saw. Really do like these Veritas saws. They treat me right. Now let's go ahead and angle this some so we can cut vertically. Some. 
I'm gonna have to fix that with the chisel. But you know, what else can you do, really? be my best day. We'll make do. We'll make do. Let's get our chisel, make sure we got a nice place on that. And we can start chopping. Chop first, clean up later. This is starting to look out of square. I think I must be sharpening, favoring one side over the other. So I'm starting to see that on a lot of my chisels. Chop. Well, let's first secure this down so it doesn't move on us. Chopping out the tails is tons easier than chopping out the pins. As long as you can Stay between the lines and keep the chisel vertical. You have no trouble at all. I do like using the dovetail saw on these, uh, cutting up the waste on the tails, or at least on the sides. Um, 
it's it's got a smaller blade, so it's about it's I think it's a little bit easier to control. And actually, I think probably mostly is because they are dovetails, and it is a dovetail saw. So I feel a little bit awkward using a carcass saw for it. So perhaps if I had a cross-cut dovetail saw, that might be something I, uh, I might use. But honestly, it doesn't make much sense. And super honestly, it doesn't make much sense to have a cross-cut carcass saw. But I do, so. I do use it quite a bit. And that, this is going to bug me too because it's definitely not pretty anymore. But uh, try to get a little chamfer in there. Maybe keep the uh, chisels from rocking about as much. Actually, let's just go ahead and cut the bench too. I think this is Doug Fur here. Cuts a not a lot nicer than the oak, red oak. I believe this is. You know what I'm going to have to do? I'm actually going to have to make divots for each tool. Just chamfering it all the way across. Do individual divots. That may or may not work.
All right, I'm going to have to try that at a later date because it's, it's not cooperating with me. It seemed like a good idea. just got shorter <laughs> and this dovetail was completely worthless so check for square before you cut your joinery and that's my face let us go ahead and Cut off this offending joint. Man. Get too excited, get ahead of myself. Don't take the proper steps and this is the result. Pretty sure I had enough extra wood on there anyway, so we should still be able to, to get all six shelves in. I'm hoping anyway. I mean, the spice the spice rack, as planned, was already going to be gargantuan, so. Uh, Taking a little bit off the top might just make it a bit more reasonable. All right. 
See if we can do it correctly this time. Dividers. Gonna go off this, off the face first. Try and keep everything still. Uh, two pokies, three pokies, four pokies. Shooting board, we don't need you anymore. Though. Four lines square across the top. Got a mark around the edges, so I know where to stop. This is where the wheel marking gauge actually comes in a lot handier for marking your dovetails. Makes a much cleaner line, I think. Or I guess I could use like a knife blade marking gauge. But this should do well enough for now. It is certainly hot today. Now I need double gauge. Just pick this up a little bit. mark between the two middle lines and then I think we can start sawing. That looks good to me. And this saw is probably due for a sharpening. Let's 
do left to right, and then right to left. So angling the board so these are more or less vertical. Get a curve square across, nice and square. Drop the elbow, fall the ball. Once you get to the bottom, bring it uh, square across. That's not how I planned it. And I went outside the line at the bottom and inside the line at the top. So that's a little closer to 90 degrees than I'd like. Again, these, these uh, measurements aren't necessarily all that critical to be exactly 100% precise. We don't need to be following necessarily that particular line or that particular angle. But it does need to go in A line, an A angle. We're just not really all that particular about which one. how I normally do it and uh, my standards are improving, I don't know. Might be one of those. Alright, we've been here before. That's too big. Looks like I went a little bit too far over my line on one of these. But honestly, if you look at any old woodwork, that's how dovetails looked. So I'm not too terribly embarrassed. But I would like to do better.
probably uh, set up a mirror or something so I can watch my lines on the on the app side or on the reverse side. I've done that before. It worked kind of. It worked fairly well. I'm just pretending that I have more skill than I actually do. But yeah, I got this. Um, well, somewhere I had a mirror, a little shaving mirror, just set up right there. You can watch the back of your saw and make sure you don't go over the line on the other side. Actually, if you look at my uh, lap joint video, you might be able to see me using it there. Looks like I forgot to do a mark there. That's okay. Go ahead and do that now. Well, now I feel even stupider because uh, I went over the line on the face that I was actually sawing from. This is the outside, or this is the inside. Is much less excusable the way I did it. Quite tricky to get the waste out from these, uh, from in between these tails. I do like working with poplar though. It's a really nice wood. Pine and oak, they have uh, really loose grain structures or really open grain, so it, it um, has a bit more tendency to tear out. And uh, it's poplar's a lot softer than maple, too, so it's, it's a bit easier to work with. wasp to come in to visit.
I think right now I've got everything but the one inch chisel out. Let's get a little bit closer to the vise so it doesn't rattle as much, vibrate. I can throw off our cut. <laughs> Clean this up a bit. I haven't got a whole lot of time left on this stream. But maybe, just maybe enough to do this. Yep, there's a lot to take down in the middle there. One thing I do find quite amusing about hand tools, um, these blades, how quickly they can build up heat. You expect it from your rotary tools, your power tools, but uh, something like this 
just pushing it through wood. You get quite warm. Actually, I have a scar on my arm from back when I was in the Boy Scouts. One of the kids decided that it was really funny to take his knife, rub it several times up against this post that was a, I don't even remember, I think we're doing like a pancake thing, like a breakfast cookout at a park. So there's this post at, uh, overhanging the uh, table area. Taking his knife, rubbed it several times up against the, rubbed the edge of it several times like against the uh, post, and put it on my arm and burned my arm. Got a nice little blister, and yeah, I think I can still have a scar somewhere. They fade, but uh, you can get hand tools pretty warm, you can get blades pretty warm. Just working them on wood. Alright, and I think I'll finish fitting that uh, after I cut the next set of pins. So we've got tails for joint B. And I do believe that's going to do it for uh, today. If you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch later on, um, well, that's probably the only people who are watching it, considering nobody's been on stream pretty much this entire time. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for thanks for joining me. Um, again, you can follow me on Twitch, you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I've got a YouTube channel where all the archives of this are going to be uploaded. And uh, yeah, I've also got a blog. Uh, everything's linked down below on Twitch. Um, Probably on YouTube too, I'm not really sure. But yeah, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.